Welcome back. I have decided, I've made an executive decision to start tearing into this thing. Um, I really just want to get the engine cleaned off mainly. And I think I can leave it in chassis and clean it off just fine if I can take all this other stuff off. Radiator, air cleaner, carb, and I can clean the carb, and the muffler and shield. Um, so I'm going to start tearing into it. But first, but first, a little CSI. So remember the hood was smashed, and um, I don't know what the story is with that, but I'm starting to think it was a pretty hard hit. And uh, I'll show you why here. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I was looking it over, is if you can see in here, hold on, let me get better light. So one of the things I noticed when I was looking it over is this connector for the headlight is melted. And it's practically touching. And in fact, it probably has been touching this heat shield here. And I thought, why in the world would they put a connector like that so close to a heat source? Well, then I noticed the heat shield is kind of domed up right here. Um, it's, it's dented. So I started looking it around. And what I see is it's got a dent right where the exhaust pipe is. So remember the grill, the grill was melted out right here. And <laughs> I'm starting to think, oh look, here's, here's some more damage. I don't know, I think that's from heat because this is all crispy. So I'm starting to think that when the hood was damaged, someone hit so hard, they pushed this support back up against the muffler, or at least the shield somehow. And I wonder if someone loosened it and straightened it back out or tried to bend it back into place. It had to be a heck of a hit. And I don't know how the headlight would have survived that, but um, apparently it did. Uh, and then I noticed one other thing. Look at this. The steering arm has been welded back into place. And if that doesn't look like a farmer's weld, I don't know what is. So... I don't, it doesn't, doesn't seem to affect the function of the tractor. It runs and steers just fine. So what the heck happened to this thing? It had to be a heck of a lick. And I'm looking over some of these other areas and there are witness marks around the edges of these little bolts right here that show that at one time, this was in a slightly different location. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. And right around there, you can see where there's paint removed and the other one's not quite like that. So something has shifted and has been corrected and it's been fine ever since. And uh, oh, I see there's, there's some witness marks down here too. Kind of some weird old chafing there. It, it could be from the hood, I don't know. But yeah, heck of a lick uh, this thing took at some point. Um, I mean, like throw you out of the seat kind of kind of hit. <laughs> but uh, I, it's fine now, so. I'm debating on what to do with that steering arm, if I should just leave it or try to replace it. I think I can get all those parts. I don't know if it's worth fixing though. But anyway, on to this. So first of all, I want to try to leave this on, this, this whole support. This is one piece and it's heavy. Um, I could remove it if I wanted to, but I'd like to avoid that because I think I can work around it. Getting the heat shield and the muffler off I think is the uh, the best course of action right now. And it looks like this shield is just held on with some probably M8, M6 bolts. Three of them. I gotta look around and I'm wondering, ah, I, just, I just don't know if I can get it out, but it kind of looks like if I can loosen it, I can walk it, walk it out through here. I'll have to take the battery out. So that's what I'm gonna start with.
Well, it doesn't look like it. We got a lot of interference here. Interference down here. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to take the front support off. Okay, as far as I can tell, all I need to do, all I need to do is take these four carriage bolts out and uh, the wiring harness has to come loose too. And I think the easiest way to do that is just pop these connectors off there. If there goes one right there and there's another one up here, up here, and then uh, unscrew the bulbs from the backs of these lights and just leave the harness on the tractor. Uh, should be it. I am a little concerned that once this starts to slide out of the frame, it might be sprung and the legs might try to kick out. And one clue that that's gonna happen is this, this rod right here. It's welded right here and it goes all the way to the other side and hooks around. And I'm, I'm kind of puzzled by that. I don't know why it's there. Uh, my guess is it's part of the manufacturing process. You know, maybe when it's assembled, it is sprung a little bit so it fits tightly in the frame rails. So this kind of keeps that in check. Or it could be there, uh, maybe this was part of the hanger from when it was painted, I don't know. So I'll get started and see what happens. Well, it's off. Uh, that actually wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I didn't notice something. There's a little hole right here in the muffler. Look at this, there's witness marks from that heat shield. I wonder if that's more of the same kind of damage. This is kind of a heat shield right here, part of the muffler. You know, the thing does kind of sound like it's got an exhaust leak, but I, I can't tell that the gaskets are leaking, and I wonder if what I'm hearing is coming out of here. Yeah, here's the underside of the heat shield. There's the damage. There's the damage from the exhaust pipe. So, yeah, big crash. Big crash. And it probably was rattling for a while, and then somebody fixed it. The plot thickens. Okay, I think I figured it out. Spot weld, former spot weld, spot weld, former spot weld, spot weld. And look at the other side, in about the same place, there's a spot weld. So for whatever reason, these welds fatigued, broke off, now there's a hole there. So the next question is, is it actually a problem? I'm not sure that it is. If I shine a light down inside the exhaust, I don't see any light coming through anywhere. So I think this might be just, just an external chamber. Uh, I'm gonna start it up and check it, and make sure nothing leaks. I might just leave it. Okay, I got the doors open. I'm gonna fire this up.
no problem. Little weld, clear right up. Might want to check the other ones too, maybe touch them up. Well, I got a friend who's going to help me weld this up, so I'm going to take this off and take it over to his house, and we're going to weld it. M10, of course. No problem. All right, I took the muffler over to a friend and uh, he welded it up for me. We cleaned all the welds off with a wire brush, both sides, and found that a lot of these were cracked. Only a couple of them had popped out, but pretty much all these welds were cracked. So he touched them up for me the best he could. This metal's kind of thin, so it was kind of difficult. And then uh, we didn't see any problems over here, but he touched them up anyway, just for the, just for the heck of it. So this should be in good shape now. All right, next order of business, I'm gonna take these smaller components off so that I can wash the engine more easily. I'll get the coil off both sides and I'll get the starter off. So I guess I'll just get to work. Removing all these filthy components took quite a bit of time because uh, there was so much grease and dirt that it was hard to see the fasteners, hard to see the joints. Uh, so if you're watching this video and some things look obvious, in person they weren't so obvious. Remember, the camera can pick up a lot things a lot better than I can. It's got a better lens on its eye, so to speak. So please enjoy uh, watching this time lapse of me trying to pull, uh, I think, just the starter and the coil off. And it gets, it gets really hairy here. Um, in fact, I'm going to split this up into two or maybe even three parts uh, to keep these videos under 20 minutes. So, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, there will be another voiceover at the end. Well, possible stopping point. I got the top bolt of the starter out, bottom bolt. Can't get any light in there. So the bottom bolt, of course, is right down here. And it's directly across from this bracket, this engine cradle that's mounted into the tractor. And it doesn't look like there's enough clearance to back that bolt out and pull the starter. All right, further investigation. This feature that's in the way is in fact not part of the engine cradle. It's a cover of some kind. There's a, looks like an M6 or M8 bolt right there all right there if I can get the little bolt out I can get the bolt out for the starter maybe finish this all this just to clean but uh, this is how I choose to struggle I got all winter all right more secrets revealed the uh, this is a control module, I think, for the engine. There's a green sticker on there. And it is held on not by one M6 bolt, but by two. The bottom one, I can feel it, but I cannot see it. And I cannot get a wrench on it, save for this little guy. I can get him on there. Can't get a ratchet on there. My quarter inch drive ratchet is junk anyway. Um, I have managed to get the starter loose somewhat because my half inch ratcheting, my half inch ratcheting box on fits, fits on there, but I get about three clicks at a time. And uh, wow, that's, that's really painful. If I can find an effective way to move or remove this ignition module thing, control module, I think that starter will come right out. It's, it's, close. <sighs> I'm going to keep plugging away at it. Here we are. Right there. That little guy right there. 
it just looks like it's going to come out hard all the way. Actually, it's not so bad. I can clean these threads off and that'll probably help. So I'm going to press onward here. At least now I feel better about it going back in. I can actually see it. All right, it got better. I had a 5 16 tiny ratchet that uh, went right on here. So M8 wrench or 5 16 seemed to fit. 5 16 fit really well. I, able to, I was able to get it out without too much fuss, drop it out of the way. And now hopefully I can get on the bolt on the starter and get it out of there. I ended up putting the top bolt back in to hold the starter in place and then I could get a just a hand driver on the bottom one just to back it out. Oh yeah, there's no way that was going to come out with that module in the way. It's nasty. There's the module. Clean that up too. There's a plastic shroud over the flywheel. Uh, a lot of the dirt's gone down inside of it. I think I can just pull this off without too much trouble that way. Any filth can get flushed right out of there. I might take this uh, belt and the fan and all that stuff off too. It looks pretty simple. I have to cover off the back of the engine. It was pretty easy. Just four bolts right there. A couple M10s right there. Then like an M13 up top. A lot of stuff packed in here. You. So this will pretty much do it for episode one of the 425 teardown. Let me tell you, uh, I cut a lot of video out. This thing was dirty, and I had a really hard time finding all the little parts and pieces and getting everything sorted. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, please look forward to another installment. See ya.